The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman. Tiger Technician. So, I was up 105 S&Ps of 12 on this fourth day of November, just the second trading day. And we've already had all-time highs in the in the Dow. That's leg D in the monthly chart. I'll be talking more about it in a moment. Just before I forget, the HGX, which is the Philadelphia Housing Sector Index, which I show to subscribers every single weekend. I have a, a chart that shows the triple yield chart. Let me just get it right now, and we can talk about it live. Uh, it shows a triple yield chart right here. And it's really important because what does it do? It basically says, there we are. So it basically says that within the context of the yields, you can see the white is the 30 year TYX, uh, T bond uh, yield, and the brown is the 10 year T note yield, T uh, NX, and the FVX right here is the cyan, uh, five year T note yield. And you can see, look at the distance between the 30 and the 10 and the 5. The 10 and 5 are very close, 30 is way up there. What's really important about this, it says you're in, stuck in this rectangle formation. There's so many rectangle formations and different chart patterns that you've got to take them seriously. So that says yields are, are still really low, but they kind of bounced off the most, most important low that was made just recently back in August. It was at, uh, let's see, 19.05, 1.905. All right, now it's at 2.272. And it hit 2.378, a peak A right there, about six, seven weeks ago. So it's stuck in the range. Same with the, um, t the, for the brown, that's the TNX, and the, the five years, the cyan. So what it's saying is that in all this time, you've had in the HGX of Philadelphia Housing Index, <clears throat> just a beautiful ride from the 227 low to the most recent high of three, right, yeah, 360.68, week of 25th of October. And now for two weeks, well, one week, last week, and let's see what happens this week, we have a main new recovery high. So they kind of go together. Yields were fantastic on the way down. HGX rallies sharply on the way up. And then yields kind of bounce for the last couple of months. And you've seen for three weeks, I'm sorry, the last couple of weeks, it is about a month and a half. And you'll see that the um, price is stalled in the housing index. That's one. Number two is wood. The iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF, which I put into the category of like uh, uh, copper, because it's international, says that there's been a fabulous activity, that the high that was made all the way over here, that peak A minus, back in February, the week of February the 8th of 2019, this year, uh, 66.92, today's high 65.32. We'll see if that's tackled and broached in leg B. That'll be really important, because you've went to a lower low and a high, that'll be a high high, it'll be like a, an engulfing period. It could be one bar. If I looked at it as, say, um, a bar that's made up of three months. But now, let's just say that it's a very, very positive thing to be closing above that after all this time. And it, it's trying to get there. So when I go to the daily chart right here, I'm looking at the HGX, and the HGX is just started to fail. Friday was a nice day, but made a new recovery high back at 360.68 on the 25th of October, pulls back to the 346 area, bounces to today's high of 358.98, and now is pulling back It's a 353. Down four, these are big numbers, it's, a, it's one, one, one and a quarter percent. 
But the interesting thing is you've got this peak D in the weekly chart. The MACD is good. The stochastic's pulling back. It's still fabulous at 93. The relative strength has just turned down, but still pretty good. The 346 level is the nine-period exponential moving average in the weekly chart, and it's pulling back. We'll see where this lands up this week, because look what happened. You went from 369 in January of 2018, 100 points down. I mean, what about 100? 140 points down. Was that about like a 46% decline to December at 227.69? And then it screams back up to the 350, uh, 360 level. I would have to say that 140 points up off the, uh, being at 220 is a, what is it, about 60%? It's a big gain. Well, uh, maybe it's time for a rest, but the MACD and stochastic are still very good. And the stochastic in the monthly chart is flat at 96. 96%, 93% in the weekly, only 64% in the daily. So it is pulling back on the shorter term. So this V-shaped pattern is going to be really important. I'm, I'm talking about this because this is part of the overall market. What I said to subscribers is that the deep cyclicals like, like a, a United a U.S. Steel, X trading at 13.20 down two cents today, screams, yes, from Thursday's low at about 11.48, Eight, it goes 11:48 price, not 11:48 p.m. Uh, a.m. It goes all the way to 12:13.78. Let me type that in. 30. I mean, that is a huge move in two days. So it's taking a bit of a breather. But it's the other cyclicals that are impressive. Look at this, uh, Dupont. DD 70.90 up a dollar 26 today. It was trading just in the 63s. Uh, a few weeks ago. It's starting a nice move. Deep cyclicals, UTX, United Technologies, all-time high, little doji candle today at 147.57. <clears throat> it went from the 144s to 100 in just a few months, October, uh, September to December low, 44% 40, down. Screams back to 144, drops down to 122. Rallies up to today's high of 147 with a round number low so far, 147.00. It says to me, it's getting a little bit tight. Is that a spectacular move? It needs a little bit of a break. What about Triple M? Triple M comes off the bottom. Fabulous day today, up 3.46, 173. Leg D, it was just at 150 on the October the 8th, a month ago. And in one month, it's gone up 23 points. That, yeah, that's... That's big, 18%, something like that. Um, what about uh, you know, Caterpillar? Caterpillar. Uh, beautiful recovery. Um, not great in the monthly chart, but it has broken out from that resistance level. Weekly B, uh, leg B, and F slash B in the week in the daily chart. So I'm saying that the deep cyclicals are finally, they call the late, <clears throat> they call the late, bloomers or this late deep cyclicals. And that says to me, look at that chart of Caterpillar. Look at the move from the trough C at 117.25. And it goes peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, peak E, peak F slash B, the little doji candle. I think there's enough room now to say that we might have a pullback by the end of the day going into Tuesday. <clears throat> and then by Wednesday, there's a really good chance that we make a nominal new high, uh, I'm sorry, nominal all-time high in some of the stocks and some of the indexes. And then maybe we take a bit of a breather. And I call it just a breather because, and I'll talk about that when we get back. Stay tuned. The next episode of The Opening Call will come about. Basil Trapp and Tiger's Admissions Hour, the author of the newsletter, The Open and Call, will be back straight after these important messages. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Um, yes, so let's just go through this. If you don't mind, I'm just going to step away for a minute. <coughs> to make it a little bit like Technical Friday. Um, in the Chapman Wave methodology, we're looking for the lowest low bar, and then we count four successively higher peaks. When you get to that fourth peak, because we alphabetize them on the way up, uh, let me just show you this right here. The lowest low we try to get to, then we count the peaks A, B, C, D. The fourth highest peak is where other things can happen. But at the same time, you could recycle and start a brand new move to the upside. We've seen that a couple of times now. I only look for, two, for three patterns. It's a straight line, like down and up, or it's an arch formation or a cup formation or a combination, lowercase h, or the reverse Y. Just make it simple. Okay, so keeping it simple, what we've got here is the V-shaped pattern, which is like a cup, except it's more like a V-shape in the actual pattern itself. But you're going from one price, the point peak D, uh, July, uh, September of uh, September the 12th, 27,306, come down to a trough C, and you rally back up. And then we went to something that I counted as, um, it's an, unorthodox thing, but it's called chap wave C1, C2. It means that peak C, instead of just fractionally going higher, all the technicals pointed like it should, but it just didn't do it. It went to 27,120 and then pulls back for a day and then goes to 27,000, I think it was 112 or 13, just seven or eight points away from the high to be able to make a new D and it failed, but it pulled back quite sharply. And then it started a new move up. <clears throat> So I call this right now peak F slash C. This is a 120-minute Dow chart. But wait a minute. Sorry, this is the daily chart. If you go to the daily with a Chapman Wave automated, Chapman Wave resistance points, 27,436, 27,480, 27,529. And what did we hit today? We went right to 27,517. That's just under 
the 29 um, level. And it says the MACD is extremely positive. On balance volume has gone a little bit overbought, but the stochastic at 87 is flat. And it's OK. It's not great. It should actually be in the 95 percent, but it's not. So that says, OK, nothing wrong here. But on a very short term basis, you've bumped into what could be a resistance point. And that's confirmed by the fact we went to spiral to the single leg up here, which is either an E or an A. I'm calling it E for now in the 120 minute chart. But it turns out that the 120 minute chart went above the 27,492 automated Chapman wave resistance to underneath the 27,666 uh, resistance. So now you're in E, I'm calling it an E, but the MACD is very strong. Stochastic's way up at 95% and saying there is support, but you're just on a very short term basis, somewhat overbought. So I suspect that we're in for just a little bit of a pullback, and then we're going to see how we handle that whole series of resistance levels I was just discussing. That's the Dow. I could do that in each one. I don't want to do that in each one. I want to say, I want to cover a quick question here, not a quick question, a question that I'll answer quickly, and I'll deal with it all week. Uh, good day, Basil. I am a market subscriber of your newsletter for many years and follow your market calls daily. Basil, could, you, could the market now be possibly, be, uh, possibly retrace the pattern it started initially after the 2016 election? Also, do you feel that the market could now be beginning the period of excessivity you have long been mentioning? I just listened to a segment on Larry Pesavento's show, and his guest described uh, frivolous items being bought up just because of excess liquidity. And the guest himself felt that there would be nothing standing in the market's way for the rest of the year. Could you please comment on your show regarding the 2016-2017 potential market pattern re-emerging if the market is likely to go into the final inflationary phase? Thank you, Jen. So it just coincidentally turns out that this morning, um, after I'd done all my work, and I usually just had a little workout, um, and... Um, I was just taking a bit of a breather before getting back and maybe doing some trading or doing some whatever it is before I do my show. And the doorbell goes, and it's um, one of our tigers that I haven't seen for, you know, I, I, I think it's a lot, maybe eight years, maybe even longer. Time flies. Um, and he just happened to be passing by, and he just couldn't resist. I, I just had to stop him to see how you were doing and all that. So, great. So we have a quick conversation because I, I need to get back to work, but it was just wonderful to see him. And we were talking about the markets, and we were just talked about this exact thing uh, on this email that just came in. You know, where are we? What are we doing? Uh, do, I, do you still think? I remember back years ago, you used to talk about um, this period of excessivity. Is this what we're seeing right now, et cetera? Anyway, I'm not going to go into all the discussion because I will just talk about it over a period of this. This week is a good week to talk about it. But... It kind of deals with all of this, and I'm just going to make it as simple as possible. You see this chart here in the weekly chart. This, you see, I'm talking about the cup formations. There's one cup formation that went to uh, 27,398 in September, um, the week of the, the 19th of September. Oh, I'm sorry, of July, and then it pulled back. To 25,339 makes another cup formation, goes to a lower high 27,306, that's peak A, where it was gray peak A, then it pulls back to 25,743, boom, it goes to an all time high right as we're speaking, and it goes to uh, we're at 27,450 after hitting 27,517. Now, what's really important about this breakout is that. The MACD is confirming the, the breakout. Stochastic is finally okay. It's above 80%. It's at 82%. The on-balance volume is lagging a lot. It made a W formation with a low. And that low says to me, in a W formation, don't ignore that it could be a low, but maybe even the second part of the V, which makes the W, could be the low that gives a kickoff for a leg B, then a leg C, and then a final leg D, or somewhere around a D at least, and then we start a bigger dip. That's number one. So it says higher highs are to come. Number two is, if we had pulled back sharply like I, I expected, and we did on, the, on Thursday, 
but we didn't hold that low. It held, hit the daily 14 period moving average and then bounced at the end of the day up 100 points. And then we gapped up Friday on the you know, on the jobs news, et cetera, jobless news, I should say, um, and it spirals up and we cap, cap up today. This is a very brief overbought situation, but it is extremely positive because of the very stocks, those deep cyclicals that I'm talking about that can carry the day if some of the others that have had a big move and need a breather take the breather. Okay. So I'm going to answer the question. I'll do it as succinctly as I can. Yes, I think that we should be going to higher highs. This is a leg D. We're right at resistance in the Chapman wave inside track repellent zone. See this dash trend line, right? The green one. We hit it exactly today. I see the subscribers early uh, over the weekend when I sent out my charts. I always send charts out throughout the weekend, ready for Monday, so people have a time to peruse the charts. Um, hopefully, you had time this morning, just as you got my charts, to see exactly what I gave as buys, and the one got hit exactly. If you had those that, that short period between reading my newsletter and uh, prior market action, you were able to pick up the stock that we wanted. It's up, uh, actually, it's up 10% right now. Um, if you didn't get it, I, we're going to have to try to organize to be able to get it in different uh, tranches, but hopefully you were able to get it this morning. And that's important. Why? Because we're looking at leg D in the monthly chart as these deep cyclicals of which many should affect the Dow will take precedence. The Dow is only up 93 points right now. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Hi, folks, we're back, and the Dow's up 96, S&P's up 11. And I just wanted to show you something. Remember, we're talking, this is live. I like to say, you know, whenever I do a webinar, I like to do it in real time. I don't like to say, if you look back, and then you show all the techniques that were fantastic, it's what what's going on right there. So right here, you can see, peak D in the two-minute E-mini chart, goes to trough C, bounces, makes that arch formation. Remember the dreaded H, the lowercase H? And then the lowercase h can go to a lowercase m. Then you got to watch out because you could go to a lower low. You remember, we, I was expecting that back in the Dow. Um, I can't remember where it was. Back in, if I can see it. No, but I don't want to get to it. I'm going to waste that. So, um, and, and I missed it because there wasn't a lower low. In fact, we gapped up there one day. We, we gapped up above the arch high which is really important because then you can keep going even higher. So now we've made the H, the H, H, lowercase H, smaller one, smaller, smaller one, trough E. This is going to be a very important moment, uh, up 13 in the E-mini. It was all the way 3,083. It's now 3,076. And there's your peak D in the 10-minute uh, chart. So just want to show you these techniques work in real time, the stuff that we've done for years and years and years. Now go back to our story. So in the monthly chart, this leg D is very close to seeing the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, since it made its high in October of 2018, and not as high, its reversal to the negative side. It has not crossed positive, and yet you've gone from 26,951 in the Dow to 21,700 and 12 in December, all the way to this moment where we went to 27,517. Yeah, those are big numbers. Almost a 30% uh, rally from the low. Now, what I am looking at is that the technicals are suggesting that you could go into November, and I have a time. Oh, do I have to? Yeah, yeah we have time for this. I have a left side, right side price time match. This is only time. This is not price now. And it goes from the high of January to the 11-month uh, decline to the December low of, two, uh, of 2018. And then it comes back to November as where I'm anticipating there should be some kind of a high. It doesn't mean you can't go high into December. It just says, it says at least in November, that's the month where I'm looking to see how it acts and reacts. Now, remember, my contention has been for a long time, it was my mistake for my subscribers. We were doing very nicely. Then I thought we would have a sharper pullback uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and we did have a pretty sharp pullback. Now it looks like nothing, but it was. I mean, 300 something points, almost 400 points. If that had just continued for one more day to the downside, that would have negated a lot of the strength that we've seen right now. And I suspect we would have pulled back, and then I'd be looking for a buy because I was expecting the move that we're getting right now to unfold after that. So timing was off on that one, and it was because of the, um, uh, as someone, uh, as, a, as a subscriber said, um, yeah, it was those two things that you don't see in the Chapman Wave uh, um, videos, uh, webinars that I do, and it had to do with uh, um, the low jobless rate. And what was the other one? The two things. Yeah, absolutely. Those are fundamental things, and they really knocked the knocked the ball out of the park in the very short term. Now, with that said, it did push enough for me to say this is probably more leg B than a leg F in the weekly chart, and therefore we should get a peak B. Then that's one week. Then another week with a leg C. Then another leg leg with a peak C, and then another leg with a leg D, and the best case is a, another leg down for a peak D, and that takes me to at least one, two, three, four, five more weeks to go. So that takes me to early December before I can actually get the top if we just keep rotating like this. Okay, so now we've already made a new high for this week, so you can't get it until next week. So that's, that's how this works. So if the MACD crosses positive, as it does, or deflects lower in January, that's going to tell me a whole bunch of things. But I want to talk about the other part of it, the Trump market um, connotations for 2020. Uh, there's no rush to do it. I'll talk about it over the, over the next week or two. So that's coming up. So the answer, James, is I'm expecting higher highs. I'm anticipating that there's no way in my vernacular, after watching markets for 
40 years, 50 years, um, for me to say that there could be a major top, and I'm talking about a major top, without the general public, even though I've made, I've absolutely made the link. I don't know if anybody else has done that, but I've spoken about it for at least six, seven months now, that the market's rally is not being recognized the public vociferously, because if they say, oh, I've done so well in the stock market, the family will look at that person and say, are you saying you're voting for Trump? You cannot relate the two in just public social um, nuances. You cannot do that. It just doesn't work without some kind of comments to be made. Nobody's going to say, that's fantastic. Oh, I love the market. Nobody wants to talk about it. I mean, that's just fact. And I don't know how to uh, obfuscate that. That's just the way it is. Okay, we're done with that. Now, the next question. So, James, higher highs with some very sudden sharp declines, but higher highs. That's been the theory. And I, I'm, I'm, I think it's going to be that way. Next question is, let me get to this. Uh, in order, uh, GWPH, what was the question? The question was... <laughs> So Michael wanted to know about GWPH. So earnings are coming out. Oh, I haven't got it in front of me now. So GWPH, uh, this is the one that I've said is one of the better, from everything I've read and heard about, it seems to be GW Pharmaceuticals. I think it's a British company. Medical marijuana. I think that they're the ones that have the greatest, there's more veracity to this company because of this longevity and to its being in the field for so long than many of the others. So I've said that this is probably the company you want to be focused on. Number one is um, the monthly chart has gone to a G-stash B with a really sharp 196 round number high right down to the most, the latest 105-ish, was it exact 105? 105.10, low of the 2nd of October, and it screams up to 135 right now. It went to 139-something, 139.72. Now, he says that the earnings reports is today. All I can say is <clears throat> that I would not be surprised if even the, if the earnings are not good, that the low of 105 should be the low for right now in this particular phase. I just don't know if it'll gap. If it gaps up because of news that it can get to 141.50 by what's Monday? By Wednesday, there's a good chance 146 is in the cars, the 200 period moving average. If it has a pop and then fails, that's one thing. It has to drop below 100 and about 135 right now. It has to drop below 100. It has to close on the day tomorrow or the next day under 131, then fail to go on any, any strength and close under the low of Thursday, which was 128.45 for me to say, uh-oh, this is in real trouble. I suspect that it's going to be maybe a mixed result and that regardless of where it trades um, in the shorter term, 125 should be really strong support. And if it starts to trade in the 141s, I think the low that was made is the low for this particular phase. But if it pulls back under 128, yeah, it could become, it might have to wait a little longer. But I'm actually thinking the 125s is very good support. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks. So let me just quickly do this. Yeah, I have a bunch of questions. Let me go through this. Uh, Mike in the den wants FCX, which is uh, Freeport McMoran, McMoran uh, trading at a big spike up to the 200 period moving average of eight of 10.93. Uh, it was at a low of eight in the 840s just uh, a few weeks ago, and now it's up at the 10 level. That's a yeah. That's a very nice uh, gain. It's uh, two points almost. Uh, hey, that's good. Uh, the weekly chart is only in a leg A. I think it's begun a move. I don't know if this is the move just yet because that monthly chart is really horrible. But I like it. And what I want to do is just to show it in a bigger context here. You see the way it keeps rallying. I, I keep looking at FCX because it used to be an unbelievable winner. There was a period a couple of years ago where this was just, this was the stock. And, uh, you know, and then it stalled. It just stalled and, and that was it. And it keeps having these moves, these big H patterns with a nice waveform peak, A, B, C, D, even F and a G. But then it stalls and it goes to a lower low. I don't like lower lows. Nobody does because it's, unless you're short. And each time it's failed, this is the first time that it's taken out the left side high. And the technicals are good, but I haven't got the stochastic stable. I want it up at 85, 90% and flat, holding in that level. If you go over 80%, that's good, but you've got to hold over 80. You can't go over 80 and then go under 80 at 77%. So it makes me with a little doji candle, makes me a little worried. I don't think it's just ready yet. This is copper. So give me a moment to say, yes, it's had a beautiful move in the shorter term. I wouldn't be surprised if it consolidates, but I don't think it has to drop very far. This big candle of Friday says that the 1020 to 1004 level over a period of a week should be really strong resistance. In fact, the way I'm looking at it, I wouldn't be surprised at 1073 right now. I wouldn't be surprised if 1045 to 1037 is kind of the support. So if you're holding it, keep holding it. Would I put a new position on? If I'm a long-term holder and I'm prepared to have a 15% risk, I'd say, yeah, I'd start a little bit of a position. But to tell you the truth, the way I'm looking at it, I think I want a little bit more evidence uh, of, of sustainability. It's not that it can't rally. I just don't see the sustainability uh, yet. I do see the technicals improving in the weekly chart, but I would 
No, I, I think it's good action on a shorter term basis. Intermediate term, it just needs more work. Maybe one more week of consolidation and then it's ready. So if you're a long term holder and you have it, keep holding. If you're a, long, a long, intermediate term holder and you're looking to buy it, you can start a position at 10.72, but the real position is let's analyze it if it goes into the low 10s. That's where I think I would start. That's where I'd actually start the, the bigger position. But right now, short term, just to get a feel, you can nibble right here. Um, uh, next question I had was, um, uh, Code, I want you to know about TCNNF. TCNNF, now, what? that's a fund, isn't it? Uh, TCNNF, I, it just says TCNNF. Um, yeah, so this, oh my gosh, this looks almost the same thing. This is going to peak, be in the weekly chart, way under the last high in the 11s. Uh, it's a 10.39 and a beautiful week, a daily rally. I love this. It's got a steady move. I, I, I'm, what I mean by I love this, I love when you build, look, let me show you. Uh, maybe if you're there, Cody, you could just tell me what it is. Um, I can look it up, but I'd rather use the time right now to do the notation. A, B, C. Pulls back sharply. So it goes from the 7.50 area all the way to the 9.55 ish, drops down to the 7.90 area, and then it goes gray A. But now I have to re uh, institute that peak C and make this a D. And it goes D, uh, double top. And it's stuck. It hasn't broken out. So this is very important. That's what, so the 200-period moving average is resistance, and the 40-period moving average, the black line, is the key support. I like it, but I think it's it is just holding its own right now. It is building in a stair-step way. That's what I meant by that. You see that it goes up. <clears throat> has a consolidation sideways, goes up, has a consolidation sideways. Now the 200 period moving average is like a magnet. It could go up again, but I think it's coming back. I think you've got plenty of time to get into TCNNF, but at the same time, um, it is improving. It is definitely improving, and the weekly chart technicals are much better, but the stochastic is only at 63%. I want to see it over 80. And that says good action, steady action, but no thrust to the upside just yet, unless it can get to 10.55 by Wednesday. If it does that, it's gone to another level. I still think it's coming back. I still think it's going to hug in the seesaw pattern, the 200-period moving average of the daily chart, and that right now is exactly where we are, 10.38, maybe 10.37. Hope that helps you there. Let's look at it again a little later on. PPLT, another mic in the den. Uh, PPLT is... Aberdeen Physical Platinum. It, uh, gap, I love when stocks or any, any, any price uh, tradable gaps down, makes it then another low, and then starts a very steady move up, and then breaks through the low, the gap down low, and just goes even higher. That to me says that whatever created this waterfall cascade, it's always skadoys, it's finished. Now you're looking at something else. You're looking at something else which says the weekly 200 period moving average of 90.56 and the PPLT is trading at 88 right now, down $1.50. <clears throat> That's going to be both a magnet and a repellent zone. And that corresponds to the weekly chart, which is also at peak C. This was a peak D weekly. So it's in the consolidation phase. And the uh, platinum monthly says, looking out, it's really building nicely, but in another stair step, with a very sharp move up and a huge give back, but with a higher low, and then a higher high, but then another higher low. Look at those huge moves up and down. Now I think it's going to be ameliorated a little bit. I don't know if this at peak C in the monthly, you're going to have another one of those whoppers which takes it down to 84. Right now, I think there's really good support in the 87s to maybe high 86s. And then I think it makes a D. I like it. Um, right at this particular moment, I would just say to you, um, if you are long, stay long, but on a very short-term basis, some part of your position, and just in case it takes out 87.26, the nine-period exponential moving average, be prepared to test the 86.70. At this particular point, it's really important that it finds some kind of support here, but I do think the pattern of higher peaks and high, higher peaks and higher lows is in place, 
and 90.56 to 200 period moving average in the weekly chart is my target before maybe it has another another pullback. Hope that helps you. CGC, yes, CGC is. Um, 1995, it's got that same pattern. It's holding the arch formation, the lowercase h, nicely. But I do think that that weekly chart is just not yet ready. And until it can trade above the weekly 200 and, and 14 period moving average in the 2330 to 2465 period, um, those, those uh, area, I. I just don't think it's going anywhere right now. It just It's like one more little phase, and then you're going to suddenly have a move in the medical marijuana stocks. Can it be gross? CGC trading in 19.95, up 24 cents. Hold it if you're right right now. If you've got it, I actually would I would get out of it if it broke under 19.20. I think it might be test the low, the recent low. But right now it's holding okay. I'll be right back. Dow's up 96. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. So Boston Scientific, uh, Sean wants to know about it. Well, what was the question? Uh, my, uh, my son has 75 shares. They weigh lower prices, $7.19. Fabulous. Um, they were in your newsletter when it was about 6 15 I know. I remember that very well. How does that look? So... Um, Sean, I'm just saying to you, don't even think about doing anything. This is a company that's a little bit like TMO, uh, Thermo Sciences, uh, Thermo Fisher, in the sense that they made horrible mistakes about 
10 years or so ago, but they seem to have corrected that. They seem to have really got their business on track. I've got an alternate count here. I, there's a whole thing that I wanted to talk about, about this very pattern in the Chapman Wave. Remember, I'm doing a webinar on my uh, some of the Chapman Wave material that people keep asking me about, my techniques uh, on the 17, on the 19th of, uh, Tuesday, the 19th of um, November. And if you're subscribed, it's free. So just real quickly, this peak D, um, is important. I think we've made another peak team, Boston Scientific. It's at 4105 BSX. I would not do anything. Those those shares um, at that price, I don't want to even talk about it until maybe next year. Just keep it going. Now, real quickly, I've got a bunch of things here. Um, quickly, it says stock, stock market, uh, GT says, stock market hits record high uh, spend your money well. No, that wasn't it. He said something about uh, S&P makes a record high, all time, all time high for the stock market, and all the fake news wants to talk about fake news. All that wants to talk about is the impeachment hoax. Yeah, you know, it's just so fascinating. Over the weekend, I kept looking at the stuff. Uh, I got into this thing with some friends. Um, they know my stance. I say, I'm just looking at the market. As far as I'm concerned, that's the most important thing, trying to do the analysis through the market. And it was difficult to kind of explain to them that the market is going up because of some very good things that have happened. It doesn't go up usually for the bad things. Uh, later on, they might turn out to be bad, but right now they're good. So just don't fight the tape. Next thing, the questions, uh, yeah, XLP should be sold because of... Um, should, are these a sell signal because of McDonald's? No, no, no. It's in a rectangle formation. It hit an all-time high just a few weeks ago. The S&P select consumer staples. Uh, yeah, it's pulling back sharply. I'll talk about it more tomorrow. Hey, stay tuned for Steve. Stay tuned for Dave. Stay tuned for Tom, Tom O'Brien. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter, and I think you'll be hopefully very satisfied.